Snailfish are odd creatures, and Day 18's puzzle requires us to deal with their even stranger number system. We're going to make a type to represent a snailfish number, which can be either an int or a pair of sub-expressions. The parser will obviously be recursive, with the base case reading in the integer value, and when we get a bracket, we read in the pair of sub-expressions. To do the reduction step, we're going to need to be able to convert this tree representation into a list, but keep the ability to get back to a tree. So let's first write a function to do the former, with the list containing the number and its depth, which we need. But just using depth might be difficult to get back the tree, so let's also include an int representing the number of open brackets required. I'm hoping this will be an easy way to reconstruct the tree. So to explain, let's say we're considering the next number at the question mark. If the number appears there, it's the next available spot, so we represent that with a zero. If instead there's an open bracket first, then we put in a 1, and if there are two brackets, then a 2, and so on. From there we do the same for the next number, which will get a 0 if it goes into that next available position. So we're going to use recursion, and we start with a bracket count and depth of 0. Then if the next part of the tree is a value, we can write out the triple as a singleton list. However, if the next part is a branch, that means that we have an open bracket and we need to increase the depth by 1, but the bracket count is incremented only for the first part. And note that the bracket count comes first in this representation. So let's try running that over the input lines. To really check it's working, Let's just take the first element, and also show the tree representation. And that looks about right, so let's move on to the list to tree function. If the next element has a zero bracket count, then we just have a regular value, but we still need to process the rest of the list. So let's do this parser style, and keep track of the remainder like this, and return just the result at the end. OK, so when the bracket count is non-zero, we can make a recursive call with that node re-injected with a reduced bracket count. We also get the next subtree, and put those together as a bracketed pair. So now it's time to check if that worked. And instead of comparing those by i, Let's actually uncurry the equality operator with a lambda, like this. We can even map that over all the lines in the input to be extra sure. So now we can actually write the snailfish addition and reduce functions, which we'll need to eventually fold over. So snailfish addition involves putting the numbers together as a pair, then doing a reduction. But the reduction will be done in the list representation. Reduction consists of first exploding and then splitting. We need to prioritize any explosions before splits, so we converge on explode, then converge on everything, like this. Splits will go through the list and find any elements greater than 9 and split them into a pair, with the second value taking the extra one for odd numbers. Note that the depth and bracket count need incrementing like before. Any other values are skipped over. Exploding is a little more tricky because we potentially need to replace four consecutive elements. We match on consecutive values with a depth of 5, and split them to the left and right elements, replacing the pair with a 0 at depth 4. We have special cases when there's no element to the left, and when there's no element to the right, so we can account for these again with pattern matching. 
Note that pattern matching happens in order, so if the first case matches, it has priority. We again progress through the list when we don't need to do anything. We can abbreviate this case because we're not using the values inside the tuple. And of course, something so complicated cannot be without typos. With those fixed, we can now focus on the magnitude function, which will return the value for a simple value, but for a pair, it will return three times the left magnitude plus two times the right. If we apply that to the result of our summation, then we should be done. Part two looks pretty easy. We just need to write a function that will take each line in turn and add it to each of the remaining lines in both directions. Then recur on the rest of the list. Then after we find the maximum of these resulting magnitudes, we've completed day 18. Happy Haskelling everyone!